Now we come to the others. There was Moshe Ibn Ezra. By the way, Ibn means son of, but it's a family name. Moshe Ibn Ezra. And then Abraham Ibn Ezra, distant cousins. And then Yehuda Halevi, the greatest Hebrew poet since King David. Yehuda Halevi was a physician. He was lived in Toledo. He writes a poem which reads as follows. My heart is in the east, and I am in the uttermost west. I cannot enjoy my food, I cannot rest, because the holy city of Jerusalem is in Christian thrall, and I am tied up in Arab chains. He was a highly respected citizen of Toledo. People came to him, he was a great physician. And also, he wrote a book, and his book, is a remarkable work. It's called the Kuzari, and it's based on an event that took place, and that is the establishment of an independent Jewish kingdom in Central Asia in the year 750. Have you heard about that? The kingdom of the Khazari, Khazar Empire. Who were the Khazars? The Khazars were a Turkish tribe. And they, on the warpath, succeeded in establishing control over a very important part of Asia. Their center was on the Volga River, and their empire extended from north of the Black Sea to east of the Caucasus. Why is that important? Because they were on the main path of the trade routes from Asia to Europe. So they controlled it. And they were very strong. They established themselves. And they had been one of the Turkish tribes, should we call it nomadic warriors, like the Mongols later on. The king of the Khazars decided, now that he is head of an empire, he should adopt a civilized religion. Now, he adopted Judaism. Now, why? There are stories, of course. One of the stories, the legend is, he invited a Catholic, a Christian priest, who told him about Christianity, and in the course of describing Christianity, said about Jesus and the Old Testament and Judaism and so on. Then he invited a Muslim, and the Muslim talked about Muhammad and the Quran and the prophets of ancient Israel who preceded. And then he said, you said that Christianity comes out of Judaism. You said Islam comes out of Judaism. Well, I'd like to speak to the Jews. And as the story goes, he invited a Jewish scholar, and he converted to Judaism. That's the story. Now let's look at the reality, the political reality. The political reality is interesting. At that time, in the year 750, had he converted to Christianity, he would have had to submit himself to the authority of the emperor of Constantinople, who was head of the Christian world. Had he adopted Islam, he would have had to submit to the authority of the caliph of Baghdad, who was head of the Muslim world. He didn't want a boss. He wanted to be independent. And I suppose he also had contact with Jews, and he knew about Judaism. The fact is, he converted to Judaism. And then in the course of time, the nobility, his advisors, also converted to Judaism and then his people. And by the year 900, this was a Jewish kingdom, you could say a Jewish empire in Central Asia, which, you know, stimulated the imagination of the Jews. Imagine there is an independent Jewish nation someplace in Asia. Well, we live in Spain, and that's over a thousand miles away. But they were very much intrigued and uh, excited at the prospect. In fact, Hasa ibn Shaprut, who was chief advisor to the Sultan of Cordoba in Spain, wrote a letter to the king of the Khazars. And he got an answer, and these letters are in pure Hebrew. And you know, for a long time, scholars were debating, that, oh, this is not true, these letters were invented, it's fiction, until they discovered letters a few years ago, from the Cairo Geniza, 
You familiar with the Cairo Geniza? I'll tell you about that. But these letters are in Hebrew, and they were written by Khazarian merchants in Kiev, which later became the Christian capital of Russia. And these Khazarian Jews in Kiev were corresponding with their counterparts in Khazaria, and the letters are in pure Hebrew, and they're Jewish. In other words, you can tell from the language and the, the expressions that they are traditional Jews, because there was a theory that they were sectarian Jews, that they were Karaite Jews. In any event, this was a Jewish kingdom, and the letters between Hasle ibn Shaprut, who was the minister of the Caliph of Cordoba, and King Joseph II of Khazaria, it's an interesting correspondence in Hebrew. Also, there was a book written, a true historical analysis of the whole history, and it seems that the records indicate that. I'm saying that because the Christians never mentioned that. Why didn't the Christians talk about that? It was very important. Because in Christian theology, there cannot be a Jewish kingdom. It's, goes against the church fathers. <laughs> the church father says there will never be a Jewish authority and Jewish kingdom. So the Christians didn't talk about it. But between the Arab historians and the Jewish correspondence and the Turkish and Greek indications, it's clear that there was such. By the way, as I said, their center was on the Volga River, which empties into the Caspian Sea. And they also controlled the eastern slopes of the Caucasus Mountains. Now, in 1000, the Eastern Slavic kingdoms had been converted to Christianity. And so the prince of Kiev, who was a Christian, combined with the emperor of Constantinople, and they attacked the Jewish kingdom of Khazaria. And the Khazarian kingdom came to an end as an empire, but there were still Khazarian Jews living there. An interesting thing is that I met Jews from that group in Israel. One of them married my wife's cousin. So we were at the wedding. It was very nice. They got married. So I was speaking to her husband. By the way, he looked like a warrior in Genghis Khan's army. <laughs> and I asked him, what language did you speak? So he says, uh, Tat. I said, Tat, what is it? I don't know. That's the language we spoke. So I said, uh, why don't you count from 1 to 10 in Tat? So he counted from 1 to 10. I said, OK. It's Persian. It's a Persian dialect. Then he tells me, you know, we are all descendants of converts, all of us. I said, really? What makes you say that? He says, well, it's a tradition. And the fact is that among us, there are no Kohanim and no Leviim. Kohanim and Leviim are descendants from Aaron. Every Kohen is a direct descendant from Aaron. And Leviim are descendants of the tribe of Levi. But Jews who convert to Judaism, or non-Jews who convert to Judaism, are Israelites. They can't be Kohanim or Leviim. And this whole group of Jews from Derbent are all Israelites, but they're not Kohanim and Leviim. But what did Yehuda HaLevi write? Yehuda HaLevi wrote this book, the Kuzari, because he knew the story of the king of the Chazas converting to Judaism. But he didn't go into the details. He just wrote a dialogue, a platonic dialogue, between the Jewish scholar and the king of the Khazars. And that's the meaning of the book. That's the whole purpose of the book, the Kuzari. It's Yehuda HaLevi's philosophy of Judaism. It's a beautifully written book. And it is the first great Zionist document written, namely a Jew living in exile and speaking about the hope of the Jews to rebuild the land of Israel, and the uh, hope of the Jews to live as a f independent, free, independent people in the land of Israel. He explains all of this in the course of the dialogue, and of course explains the, the beauty of Judaism and the greatness of Judaism and so on. Yehuda Halevi also was a, you could say, dedicated Zionist, because with all of his success, and he was a, a physician who had a good reputation, he still felt he, he, he doesn't want to continue living in a Christian country because Toledo had become Christian by this time. And Yehuda Levi set out to go to the land of Israel. He actually went. It is reported that he landed in several North African cities, in the Cairoan and in Egypt. And that's the end. We don't know after that what happened. Of course, there are legends about what happened, but we don't know what happened. He disappears. 
He was about 75 years old at the time. And the journey was not easy, especially going from one hostile environment to another. And the environment in the land of Israel was very hostile because the Crusaders were still on the march against the infidels. And Jews are just as infidel as Muslims to the Crusaders.